So I need to say something right off the bat before I start the whole conversation of the video. My daughter uh, took a look at the video and she thought it wasn't clear enough that if you have an ultrasound and they see a fibroid, do not worry, okay? They're benign. They might cause symptoms and we can take care of the symptoms, but they're nothing that's going to bother you further than that. Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Wagner and I'm doing another subject on OBGYN topics, a subject which is a fairly large uh, topic and I'll cover in two videos is fibroids. So very, very common. Um, I'll tell you about them, increased risk factors and um, diagnosis and then in my next video I'll talk about treatment of fibroids. So fibroids in general, benign tumors of the uterus. Excuse my art skills. <laughs> Um, so, if this is your uterus, okay, this is the cervix, this is the lining of the uterus, okay, so tubes would be here with ovaries, okay. The uterus is made up of muscle and fibroids are growths of the muscular portion of the uterus. We generally break fibroid masses, fibroid tumors, many people call them, uh, up into three different categories, and they're categorized by the placement in the uterus. So one is called intramural, and that's in the body of the uterus. One is submucosal, and that's where all or a portion of the, the uh, fibroid is in the cavity of the uterus. And then the third is subserosal, where it's on the outside of the uterus. Included in the subserosal is something that we call pedunculated fibroid, where a fibroid is on a stalk um, and it's outside of the uterus. Okay, so fibroid tumors are very, very common. Uh, regardless of diagnosis, they seem to be present in over 50% of African American women and over 40% of uh, Caucasian women, um, whether or not they're symptomatic. They do not present until puberty, and they usually shrink after menopause. So this is a, an issue with women between puberty and menopause. The two types of symptoms that people usually have from fibroids are abnormal bleeding and bulk or pressure symptoms. So first we'll talk about the abnormal bleeding. Usually the reason that abnormal bleeding occurs with fibroids is that the fibroid itself, whether it's a submucosal or a intramural fibroid decreases the ability of the uterus to contract during the period and so bleeding continues uh, without stopping and sometimes spotting can occur between periods things like that. This, the subserosal fibroids normally don't have any impact on bleeding patterns. Um, as far as the pressure symptoms or the bulk related symptoms people can have pelvic pain, pressure, GI symptoms, because if the uterus is very, very large, then it can press on the kidneys, the bladder, um, the colon, many different places. Less common, but it does occur, is painful intercourse and um, fibroid degeneration or torsion. Sometimes during pregnancy, fibroids can degenerate, which can be extremely painful, uh, and fibroid torsion can occur in these types of uh, subserosal fibroids on the stalk, as you can imagine, if that turns and the blood flow is cut off from the fibroid, that can be extremely painful. So, diagnosis. Usually, diagnosis is through symptoms. In other words, history of the patient, what kind of symptoms they're having. The next step would be pelvic ultrasound, which is usually the best way to see if the patient has fibroids or not. Um, if you're looking for whether fibroids are involved with the uterine cavity, we do something which I'll have a video about another time. This procedure is called the sonohistogram. So it's an ultrasound, but during the ultrasound, a thin catheter is put through the uterus and fluid is put into the uterine cavity. This fluid expands the cavity and it's easier to see exactly how much of or whether a fibroid is involved with the lining of the uterus, which is important um, when we come to treatment of the fibroids. Um, the other thing that can be useful, especially with planning surgery, is an MRI of the pelvis because an MRI is really allows a 3D visualization of the uterus. It can tell us exactly how deep a fibroid is, what's, what it's involved with, 
exactly where they are. Um, there's also something called a cervical fibroid, which can be very hard to deal with um, surgically because there are so many vessels in this area. Um, MRIs are helpful in taking a look at that to see exactly um, how much vasculature um, and what is involved with the fibroid. So basically to recap, fibroid, they are benign growths of the body of the uterus, the muscular portion of the uterus. They're absolutely nothing to worry about unless they cause symptoms. Most common symptoms, abnormal bleeding and, and pressure on other organs. Um, they are diagnosed with ultrasound and uh, history and sometimes MRIs. And next video, we will see how we deal with these things.